Hallelujah. You may be seated. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Hallelujah. It is so good. Without a mother, I wouldn't be here. That is a fact. I don't care what this world thinks. I go on facts. <laughs> I believe in facts. Uh, I uh, heard a story the other day, and, and uh, I thought it was pretty uh, interesting and, and uh, kind of fitting. I, I thought about it for a few days, and I said, I think it's very fitting for today. Uh, uh, I read this story, and it was uh, talking about uh, a group of uh, tourists that visit a, visited a crocodile farm. And the owner of the place launched a bold proposal, said, whoever dares to jump and swim to the coast and survive, I'll give you a million dollars. No one dared to move. Suddenly a man jumped into the water and desperately swam to the shore while being chased by all the crocodiles. With uh, envious uh, 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 and things came about, uh, everybody was taken and admiring him uh, at, at, the, at what, he was, what he had done. And the owner announced and says, we have a brave winner. And after collecting his reward, the couple returned to the hotel. Upon the arrival, the manager told, uh, told him uh, he was very brave to jump in the midst of all them crocodiles. And the man said, I didn't jump. Someone pushed me. <laughs> his wife smiled. The moral of the story is, behind every successful man, there's a woman who pushes him. <laughs> a mother pushes their children to be the best. They don't teach them and push them to be uh, 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 not model citizens. They push them to be model citizens. They correct us and they did our thing. My, my mom uh, learned how to whip us uh, because of my older brothers. She was well, well uh, versed in the whipping uh, because my older brothers. It wasn't because of me. And, uh, but I probably I needed correction just like they did. So uh, God uh, 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 gave us all mothers to correct us, gave us wives to help us. All the songs of today that they sang was always there was somebody there helping us. There was always somebody there to be with us. There was always somebody that is by our side. There, there was somebody that was never going to leave us or forsake us. But there was always somebody and they were talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe our God gave us mothers to help us be raised on the right path. And if you didn't have a mother that raised you on the right path, the Lord will direct you. And there's a lot of mothers in this house that will be there to help you. Uh, there are people here that uh, we are supposed to look at family members and church family as mothers, uh, fathers, sisters, brothers, grandmas and grandpas. Sister Sandy, I, I just call her grandma. She just... She just uh, she reminds me of my sweet grandmother. You don't remind me of my grandma Stevens, but you remind me of Grandma Anderson. <laughs> grandma Stevens was, uh, had six kids to raise by herself. <laughs> she was pretty tough. Uh, uh, so she, uh, 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 but uh, my Grandma Anderson was sweet, uh, and you remind me of her. You're very sweet. Hallelujah. So everybody has got a family member in, in the church. And if you don't have somebody, grab on to somebody. Uh, I got children. Uh, now I got grandchildren. I just adopted them. I got them. They're mine. 
because uh, they're they they need love and I need a grandchild, so I I just adopt them. Uh, uh, but it, everybody needs somebody to help them along through this hour and through this day. And today I I want to talk to uh, us about the one that's going to help us the most through everything. But there are others that help us along the way. I want to turn to Samuel, First uh, Samuel. And uh, uh, in, in the verse of scripture of, uh, of 14 and 6, I'm going to read one verse of scripture. And it said, And Jonathan said unto the young man that bear his armor, Come, let us go over unto the garrison of this, these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work uh, for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and said, the Lord is by our side. You may be seated. You know, God is going to be by our side. I like that picture. I, I'd like to go there. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, looks like the Grand Canyon. Uh, I'd go there now because my kids aren't small. And I, I wouldn't be so fearful because uh, my daughter, Hannah, liked to walk running around the rock edge, and it's 1,400 foot straight down, and that's where she played. And uh, we didn't rest very good while we were there <laughs> and didn't get to see much. But uh, 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 raising children and raising a family is a little different. Uh, uh, than when your grandparents, and uh, I've heard a lot of grandparents say you can just love them and send them home. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a whole different uh, sphere in life. But uh, uh, I want to talk to us today that the Lord is by our side. I was reading this, and this scripture has been coming through this week and been asking the Lord to talk to us today and and it kept coming back to this, and I heard a song on the radio the other day, and, and, and the song was basically saying that the Lord will never leave you alone. Regardless of who leaves you or who's not by your side, God is always going to be there. I have found out through life, even though I have a family, they're not there all the time, but my God is always there. Uh, uh, there are times where my family don't know what I'm going through because I can't speak what I'm going through. I can't say what I'm going through. I have to keep it quiet, but they know that uh, uh, when something is going on, they pray, And uh, but I know there is a God that's by my side helping me every step of the way. Uh, my God is on my side. Today I read the verse of scripture about Jonathan. Uh, he was uh, going against the Philistines and the Philistines in Israel were in a standoff. They were uh, 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 fighting and skirmishing one to another. And uh, the Philistines were bold and they, they thought they were uh, superior of the Israelis, the Hebrews. Uh, you ever come across the enemy where they feel like they're emboldened and they can tell you anything that uh, you don't, uh, that, that they just think they got it all the answers. And they come against you and they attack you and they do all these things against you because they've been emboldened and they, they'd like to strike the fear into the minds of the Hebrews. They were, they, uh, when somebody is bold and, and, and want to fight, uh, there is uh, 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 something in people that they're going to be fearful. I remember coming against uh, uh, a couple gentlemen that were sick Six, five, six, six. They were huge guys, and and, and they were going to clean my clock. And and all I knew what to do was I wasn't going to run. I wasn't going to tell my friend because then I knew there was going to be a fight because he he liked the fight. But I just stood up to him and, and just said, "Hey, buddies, I uh, 
What are you going to do? Are you, you're you going to prove that you're bigger than me? I wasn't, I, I wasn't fearful. I just knew what the outcome would have been if we did get in a skirmish because I wasn't that tough. But I, pl- I played their bluff and just stood up to them, uh, bold and uh, people and people with uh, 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 superior s- uh, spirits. You can stand up against them, and all of a sudden they'll back down. And you see, I don't have scars all over my face, so uh, it turned out really well in that little skirmish. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't have to fight. Uh, It wouldn't have been good. It wouldn't have been pretty. Uh, It it wouldn't have been fun at all. Uh, uh, But uh, people that want to instill fear, the enemy likes to instill fear in you and me. Uh, 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 They they like to tell you you're going to die. They like to tell you, oh, if you do this, you're going to, you know, that's going to be bad, you know. Uh, and, and let me tell you, if you really struggling with fear, don't listen to the news. Don't listen to the radio. Turn all that stuff off. Read, uh, read the Bible. Listen to preaching. Listen to Christian music. And forget about that stuff because that's all that does is put in fear. You know there's a missile that's supposed to fall from the universe, uh, the outer space, and it could hit all of us. Last night I was... He laid in bed, and and, and uh, the pressure and everything was moving, and all of a sudden the door slammed, and I got woken up out of a dead sleep, and then the sirens were going off, and we were going to have a bad storm, and and I just went downstairs and shut the 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 alarm the the alarm off, and I said, well, I don't feel anxious. I'm going to bed, and Lord, if if the if you take us, I'll see you here in a few. <laughs> and I crawled back into bed and went to sleep. Uh, all I did was shut the door, uh, made sure the door wouldn't slam open, and, and, and things were popping and moving around the house, and I uh, shutting everything down and, and, and making sure everything's cool, and, and then I went to bed. But fear... They want to institute fear where we're going to run and hide and and not fight. Uh, uh, The Philistines uh, 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 was looking at uh, the the children of Israel and they looked at them and said, look, 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 look at the, they came out of their holes that they've been hiding in. They were emboldened. They were thought they were uh, superior to everyone else, and, and 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 you know, fear just breaks down your immune system physically. You do fear all the time. You're you're afraid all the time. I I hate being afraid all the time. I I, I would never leave the house. Don't go outside. You get bit by a snake. Don't go outside. You get. Uh, malaria. Don't go outside. You, you, you get this. Don't do this. Don't do that. Uh, all I know is my wife says I can't touch a hedge trimmer anymore. <laughs> and it's, uh, if you do do a hedge trimmer, use both hands, not one. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, uh, people put fear. The enemy wants you to fear. Uh, They don't want you to step out and do something for God. They don't want you to uh, 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 fight a a good fight of faith. They want you to just stay at home and and, and be fearful of everybody around you and telling you that nobody wants this gospel. Uh, And they want you to be fearful that you're not telling people about the gospel. They want you uh, to say, oh, they, they don't want you. Well, that's a big lie. More people are coming to God than ever before. Uh, uh, Jonathan, he got sick of sitting. You ever get sick of sitting? You ever get sick of doing something? You ever get sick of just talking about it? Uh, one time at uh, in my house in Texas, we talked about cleaning the carpet. We talked about cleaning the carpet. One day I just said, I'm cleaning the carpet. Got a box knife out. 
cut around all the furniture, rolled it up and threw it outside. I cleaned the carpet. Uh, I got sick and tired of talking about it. Uh, I did something about it. Jonathan was in the same boat. He said, I'm sick and tired of just sitting around. Uh, and and, and her, his dad was sitting around underneath a tree and, and, and deciding what to do. And he just said, well, I'm fixing to go up and I'm going to show myself to the enemy. And if they say, wait down there, we'll come to you, we'll just stand. But if they tell us to come up here, we're going to go up there because the Lord just gave us a victory. The Lord was coming to give us a victory. The Lord was, uh, was saying, hey, uh, you're going to take him over. You're going to conquer. You're going to do this. Uh, sometimes you just got to make yourself and make a first step and let the Lord use you and see what God will do with you. Right. You know, I saw a couple things in that verse, them, that, that chapter I said, you know, he, most of the, when they, when you always read that story, it was always a victory if they called you up there, but what if they waited for him to come down? Would he still have the victory? Because he said he didn't move. He just stood there and waited. Well, come on down here. But the enemy said, why don't you come up to my house? Why don't you come up to my camp? We're fixing to show you a thing or two. We're, gonna, we're, we're fixing to annihilate you. Do you ever have a time where fear comes and says, hey, I, I don't know if I want to go there or not. Uh, the enemy says, yeah, you just come up here. We're going to take care of you. You, you. you just come out, crawled out of your hole. Now we're going to take care of you. And so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, uh, we're going to annihilate you. Uh, but uh, but the, uh, the, the, the armor bearer came behind uh, Jonathan and said, whatever you desire in your heart, I will do. Uh, what you seem as good in your heart, that's what we'll do. I'll, I'm going to be right with you. Let's just go. And, and, uh, and when they said, hey, Hebrews, why don't you come up here and let me show you something. Oh, Jonathan crawled right up there and started to knock the Philistines down and, uh, and the armor bearers still pulled out the sword and was slaying them right behind Jonathan. There's something about uh, knowing that God is going to be with you that you're going to conquer and that you got a brother you got a sister somebody behind you helping you slay them as you're knocking them down you're not in this alone you're not in this battle alone why do you ask for prayer because you can't fight it alone brother Brennan you were flat on your back you couldn't hardly function let alone uh, pray there are times when we're so sick that we can't even pray we were just saying oh lord just take me i want to die and that's where the brothers and sisters come in and say we're going to gird you up we're going to pray. That's why we have prayer in church. That's why we pray for people. That's why we hand out a prayer cloth. Because people need to be delivered. People need to be set free. People need to be touched by uh, the very move and touch of God. Uh, 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 sometimes we can't do it alone. Jonathan couldn't do it alone. He couldn't knock him down and, and slam. But his armor bearer went with him and said, Yeah, uh, the Lord's going to give it to us. We just proclaimed it. Uh, God is going to be with us. We're going to go fight them. They took on 20 men. But when you follow the will of God and step out, it's more than 20 that died that day of the enemy. Because all of a sudden fear turned around from Israel and went back to the enemy. Oh, when you are in prayer and you feel fear come upon you, you need to speak in Jesus' name. Go back to where you came from 
in Jesus' name. When fear comes on you, say, go back in Jesus' name. Command it because it's the power of God and power of Jesus' name and the authority. Uh, uh, instead of the enemy attacking you, you turn around and let the things that were supposed to attack you attack them. And the next thing you know, the Philistines were fighting amongst themselves. You know, a divided house don't stand. A divided house don't stand. That's why it was always good to have a unified home. It's a unified spirit, a unifying uh, thought, a, a unifying warfare. We're not going to let the enemy come in and destroy us at home. Uh, we're going to make this house a sanctuary. You need to make your home a sanctuary, just like it is right here. You need to make your so house a sanctuary of peace. Wherever you set your feet, if the peace comes to that, to that house, you bless it. When you go on your job, if there's peace on your job, you step up to that and you bless your job and your employers. Why? They're blessed because of your behalf of living for God and being faithful. Why? Because you needed a job. Oh. So the Philistines came against them, but they fought against each other. And the armor bearer and Jonathan stirred it all up and changed everything that was going on. They knew if they had said this one thing, God was going to be with us. You pray, you step out, God's going to be with you. Are you going to have fears? Oh, yeah. More than likely. Why? Because we don't like change. I like to get up at the same time every day. I like to have my cup of coffee every day. I like to have a certain cup of coffee every day. I don't like no weak coffee. I want a good cup of coffee every day. <laughs> my store that... They don't open early enough for me. They, now they don't open till 6 o'clock and I don't get my cup of coffee. Because <laughs> we don't like change. We like it the same. But that's where the fear comes in of unchanged. But when you step out and start walking... The Lord said he would direct your steps. If you acknowledge him, he will direct your steps. He will light your path. He will make a, a way where you never thought there would be a way. Uh, and next thing you know, you look around and you say, oh my, how did we get here? Who would know that because of a pandemic, we have uh, uh, been on the radio, been on all these different things. Now we started our own radio station, and in two weeks, we've had over 10,000 people already tuned in to the radio station uh, right here, Apostolic Life. Uh, 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 they hear our scriptures. They hear people reading Bible. Uh, they hear people preaching every day. Uh, do we have enough material for 24-7? No. Uh, they just play it over and over again. And guess what? People are called... Uh, uh, to, letting us know that they're being helped by the verse of scripture or, or by what is spoken not just here in, in Oklahoma but around the world not just around the world but here in Oklahoma right. isn't that awesome Brother Brennan, you speak in faith and speaking about healing and deliverance and people seeing you walk, you are showing a testimony. God is able to do anything as you're stepping out. So who knows what's going, 
uh, what God is doing in the next. Uh, who, who knows what this world is going to do? Who would ever thought a year ago we'd all been shut down? Who would ever thought that uh, the world would be totally upside down a year ago? Who, who would ever thought it would be like that? We've never seen something like that. It has drove people crazy. Uh, but our God has seen us through. Our God has delivered. Our God has helped us through everything because he's been by our side. There's another story about uh, 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 the Lord being upon the sides and being in the midst. There, there are some different things that happened. Joshua was just now given to the leadership uh, of the children of Israel and the first obstacle that he had in the promised land was Jericho, a fortified city, unable to go uh, preach, no way you could break down the walls, no way you could get into that building uh, that, uh, that city because of the, the thickness of the wall and the strength of that city, uh, but uh, John, I could see jo Joshua looking at that and saying Oh, my. You ever have one of those, oh, my, what are we going to do? And any good leader is going to count the cost. Oh, man, if we breach, try to break down the wall, they'll shoot us from the, shoot us from the, the wall. How many men are we going to lose and how many men do we have? And really, the children of Israel weren't, fortified warriors they've been just walking around getting fed and pampered and fed and watered and, and pampered all the time man they were like they were retired uh, they just walked around and their food came out to them and, and their quail came to them and they didn't even have to go out hunting they just had to go and pick it up they were, they were pampered but now they were sitting in front of a fortified city and the food uh, the manna had quit being dropped every morning. So now they are going to have to do something. When the cupboards are bare, it's time to get up and go to work. <laughs> if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, there's more people. Uh, there are more jobs now than ever. Uh, uh, you can just pick a job you want. Uh, you can almost pick your wage anymore either. Uh, it, it, it's, it's crazy what is being offered right now. Uh, uh, and, and who cares about the minimum wage? Who cares if they raise it to 15? Good night. They're offering more than that. Uh, uh, I seen one place they're offering $38 an hour. I said, whoo, that's some pretty good money. But I like where I'm at. Uh, uh, but... Uh, all these different situations came about. And here Joshua is looking at that and sitting there going, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Brother Ivan, what are we going to do? We, how are we going to get in there? What are we going to do? Is the Lord really with us? He just quit sending manna now. Is he really with us? The signs ain't falling from heaven every morning. Is he really with us? Have you ever had that time? Of, is God even with us? Does he even hear my prayer? Let me come to tell you, he's by your side. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. He's going to be by your side. No matter what you're going through, how major of a situation, how bigger, uh, big is the obstacle, my God is still going to be there. All of a sudden, Joshua looked around, and here's a man with a sword drawn. When you got a guy with a sword drawn in front of you, you kind of want to know whose side he's on. He said, are you on our side or are you on our enemy's side? And he said, I am on the Lord's side. I'm the captain of the Lord's host. 
<laughs> well, if you're on the Lord's side, that's the side that I'm following. That's the side that's going to be on my side. Uh, the Lord was with them in the middle of the biggest obstacle in their life. And you know the story. They went around uh, the city of Jericho once a day for uh, uh, six days. And on the seventh day, they walked around it seven times. And them big fortified walls fell. There is something about our God when he's on your side. How the obstacles are going to fall. The obstacles that come and put fear in your life and disheartenment. They're going to fall and they're actually going to turn against them. Woo! So our God is going to help us. He's going to be with us. He's not going to leave us. In Hebrews 13, 5 through 6, it says this. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Don't wish that you had everything your neighbor has. But be content with what things as you have, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Verse number 6 goes on and says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. The world wants you to live in fear and be afraid. The world wants you to be afraid of them. And they will do things to make you fearful. They will put out lies and rumors to make you fear. There are uh, preachers that uh, have gone to jail because they talked and preached about Adam and Eve uh, was the first family created by God and it was God that fortified male and female. And the preacher went to jail. Well, I ain't seen it around here and it hadn't made the news here. They like to put that rumor out there. Oh, let me throw this out. Everything on Facebook ain't fact. And everything the government says ain't fact either. And everything the news is saying, it ain't fact either. Uh, I want to say, thus saith the word of the Lord. Uh, thus is who I'm going to stand for. Uh, this is, yeah, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and all that kind of stuff in the last days. But my God is faithful through it all. Because it's, when I looked, you know, Brother Brennan, at the uh, back of the book, it says those that overcame. Right. Right. <laughs> those that fought through it all right. overcame that what the world came against them with. They were robed in white. They had a victorious crown. And they were eating at a table, a banquet. Sounds like we win. And I never want to be on the losing side. I, I'm, I'm kind of bad about that. I hate to be a loser. <laughs> I'm not, not going to be on the losing side. Because the loser was the guy that was in heaven that was in charge of the worship in heaven. If anybody's a loser, he is. Because he was in heaven. We're trying to get to heaven. And he got cast out of heaven. And he took a third of the other uh, uh, dysfunctional angels and fell down to the earth. No wonder the earth is dysfunctional. But Sister Brennan, we're victorious Amen. because we decided we're going to follow our God. Right. We're going to follow the two-thirds 
that are up there. We're going to worship with them. They, they are looking at us like, why are they worshiping? Uh, all the turmoil and the trouble they go through, but my God has been victorious for us. My God has been on my side. The God is standing by us. He's a God that's standing with us. He's a God that's never going to leave me or forsake me. He's always going to be there. So let's stand. So you might be making, trying to make some hard decisions in your life. I want you to know my God's there. You're stepping out doing things that you, a year ago you said, oh, what? There's many in here that have said, oh, my, who would imagine? You know what we have done around here? As a door opens, we step through it just to see, just to see where it'd go. Are we turning our back on God? No. We know my God's before us. Is the gospel supposed to be preached around the world? Yeah. Before the Lord comes, so this, this, this gospel's got to preach in every country. How are we going to get there? Are we all going to go to every country and preach? No. The next thing we got is the airwaves. The next thing we got is this internet. The next thing we got is all these different avenues and different things. This gospel is being preached around the world into every country. We are having brand new countries every week get a hold of our uh, uh, of the station and listen. Not just uh, uh, say, okay, we see it, uh, but they are actually listening to the station. Some of them are tied on it all day long listening to the preaching. Uh, uh, we don't have music on there, but we have preaching. We got uh, some people's songs that they have let us use. We're using theirs, but we can't use our singing. Uh, uh, because of copyright things. So, uh, but our God is opening doors everywhere. If he opens the doors in that matter, what is he going to do in your personal life? But I'm retired. <laughs> God has got something for you greater than you've ever imagined. You retired. You elders that have been in this, this, this way for years. You can touch God in a drop of a hat because you know who your God is. You don't have to struggle and say, which God am I going to pray to? You just know I got my one God and I'm going to just say, Jesus, I come to you. We got an issue. And I know you're a God that can solve the issue. He can give you peace in the midst of the storm. Brother Mickey going through cancer treatment. And he said, I've been at peace through the whole thing. His wife was more upset, like all wives are. It's their nature. They like security. They like... They like the man to be around to open the pickle jars. <clears throat> but through it all, the wives got a hold of God and they pray. They lift up hands and they pray that God is there. God reassures them. He says, I love you. He wraps his love around us. He said, don't matter what you're going through, he's going to help you through it. The enemy says, why don't you quit? And the Lord said, ah, come on, we're going to make it through. What's one obstacle? Have you made it through one obstacle? You can make it through the next one. With God's on your side, there ain't an obstacle that can, God can help. Jesus said, uh, I overcame the world. Uh, you can overcome it. 
He overcame it. He walked through it. He had just as much Holy Ghost as you do. He's God. Got the Holy Ghost. That's God's Spirit in us. So if you're struggling in the flesh, get in the Spirit and pray. If you're struggling getting into the Spirit, pray. Call somebody and say, hey, bro, brother, sister, I need prayer. I've had preachers call me and say, brother, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really having a problem. I said, brother, I'm, we're linked up. We're praying. Last week we had missionaries call and say, praying for your church. Praying, pray for your church. He's in Germany. He's down praying, and God got a hold of him to pray for our church. I don't know what's all going on. I don't know everybody's situation, but my God knows your situation. So I come to tell you today your situation. Why don't you link up with God and say, we're going to just step out and go forward. We're going to step out and t- draw the sword. We're going to step out and pray. Uh, if you need somebody to help you link up, tell the one next to you, I need prayer for this, and we're going to pray against it. And all those that confide in you, don't put it on Facebook. Don't go around and blab it. Get down and pray and say, yeah, we're going to overcome. Because things come on our, against us that are really, it just breaks the heart. You want to know what ministry is all about? It's like motherhood. You get your heart broke a lot. But you also get blessed. I've seen many a mamas worship God and praise the Lord because their babies are out of diapers. I'd worship every little obstacle, every little victory in the flesh and out of the flesh and into the spirit. Every victory, you need to worship God. You need to worship God. So where are you today? Are things upside down? Are you wanting to be strengthened? I want you to just reach out right here. In the closing of this service, I need Jesus more now than ever before. This world is upside down, and I'm going to follow Jesus and not the world. I'm going to follow him and he's going to strengthen me no matter if they're going to move me, no matter where my job takes me, whatever is going to happen, I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust in him. God is going to open a door. God is going to open a door for my life. God is going to open a door in all our lives. Right here, we're the victorious people. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, God.